guys, welcome back to Live from the Nest. Really excited to welcome Andy from Snack Nation. Thanks for coming, man. Well, you're absolutely welcome. Great to be here. Absolutely. We're going to have some fun today. I think, uh, you know, this is going to be an interesting side of marketing where a lot of people kind of overlook it. And I think we're going to, we're going to really focus today on lead generation and also a little bit on how to manage those leads. So um, obviously you're an expert in that. If you wouldn't mind, you know, give the listeners a little background on, your, on what you've done and kind of how you got here. Well, it all started back in the days of the dinosaurs. Um, well, that's a quote from the airplane. Oh, but yeah. uh, no, back, we started uh, Snack Nation back in 2014. We saw a big gap in the market uh, with healthy snack delivery inside of smaller offices. We actually started back uh, even earlier than that doing vending machines, healthy vending machines, yeah. uh, and then uh, pivoted into Snack Nation. What we saw was uh, a lot of the larger food service companies were serving bigger businesses, but there was uh, you know, an underserved market with smaller businesses uh, with healthy snacks. So we put together a curation of healthy snacks in a box, started testing it out in the market, and uh, started to get some momentum. Uh -huh. And there was uh, obviously a very big need for healthier eating inside the office. Yeah. And uh, you know, started that in 2014, and you know, here we are today in 2019 with thousands of offices nationwide. And uh, we're now America's number one healthy snack delivery experience. I love it, man. I, and we use Snack Nation at our office, been using it for a long time. It's obviously, I mean, you found that niche and you found that void and just had to fill it, right? Uh, during a time over the last five or so years where added compensation outside of monetary compensation is so big for work environment and work culture, you filled a void that obviously needed to be filled. 100%. Yeah. Um, so tell me about from the beginning to where you guys are at now. What are some of the things that have made the biggest difference for you guys? Well, the biggest difference in terms of what? In terms of? Well, I'd say the contribute to your growth. Yeah, to the contribute to our growth. Well, I mean, first is having a very clear vision yeah. uh, you know, of what we're doing. Um, we weren't just saying, hey, there's an opportunity for healthy snacks, yeah. right? Uh, the, the original core vision for us, for my business partner and I, we, uh, we believed that uh, there was a, there's an obesity epidemic. There's, a, there's an epidemic in the United States of unhealthy eating, and that's causing a lot of um, additional health care costs, causing a lot of uh, actually uh, self-esteem issues yeah. and people just not happy with themselves. And um, we wanted to make a change on... Uh, the healthy eating habits of people. Um, Got it. And so, so when you look at the core of what, what we're doing, we're, like, we're saying, hey, it's not actually an education problem in the United States. We know what is healthy and what's not healthy. It's yeah. pretty clear. Yeah. Uh, what the problem was is, is an access issue. Uh, and so people didn't have convenient access to healthier foods. So we were looking to solve that problem inside the office with Snack Nation and curating healthy snacks together and shipping them off to offices to give offices that access. If you think about back in the day, there's vending machines and it's all junk food and, and oh, unhealthy yeah. food. Now we're giving another option to offices saying, hey, you don't have to have junk food and vending machines. You can have healthier food delivered right to your office. Yeah. So that was, that, that's one of the core things with uh, anyone who's looking to scale their business is get really clear on what your vision is, what's, what's that core, what's, that, what's your DNA? Uh, because when you're trying to make decisions uh, to grow your business, uh, the, you, you know, when there's a difficult decision to go right or left, yep. you, you just you know, zoom out and, 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 and look at your, your overall mission and vision and say, what, do we want, what are we doing here, yep. right? And that'll help guide those decisions. So that's been, that's been one, one thing. Um, another thing is just uh, a, a big focus on, on marketing, right, um, for, for growth. You need to have uh, good marketing. You need to understand who your customer is, uh, define what, what those pain points that your customer is having, and then solve those pain points. Yeah. Um, and then combine that into a strategy where, uh, at least for us, we, we focus very heavily on content marketing, uh, and then on uh, eventually once we got the content marketing engine going with the organic traffic and yep. the organic lead flow, then we moved on to the paid platforms. A lot of companies do it actually in reverse. Yeah. Um, in hindsight, we probably could have tested a little bit more on AdWords and learned a little bit more about keywords and which yeah. ones were the good ones and then, and then uh, written the content. Yeah. Uh, so in hindsight, we, we probably should have done that. Yeah. Uh, but we started, we're saying, hey, Employee engagement, 
uh, employee happiness, employee appreciation. These are all things that offices want, yep. and these are all things that are uh, closely associated with our product. Let's just start writing phenomenal content on those topic areas. Yep. Uh, eventually, those articles got ranked in Google. Um, we did some link building to, to get those articles ranked. Okay. Traffic started coming in, leads started coming in, uh, so we, we picked it right. But yeah, I think uh, actually in hindsight, the recommendation I would give is go test on AdWords those keywords that you think are going to work well for your business. And if you're getting good engagement and good leads coming in, then then write the organic content. Yeah. Well, excited to dig in on the marketing side. Obviously, that's what we focus on here at Hawk. Um, it's interesting you say that, right? Because AdWords is definitely a big opportunity for people to test. We're really lucky because we leverage a platform called Bright Edge, which basically gives us access to the back end of Google so we can see you know, search volume, keyword volume, um, what we call striking distance between the content that you've created and how close it is to actually ranking within that first couple pages, how much search volume that there is, what your competition mm -hmm. in between you looks like. So we're actually able to get pretty tactical on the content that we create, the keywords we optimize for. That way, when you do start putting some money behind those ad dollars, that content's a little bit closer to striking distance, which is fun. But as you get into, you know, you've built a really great reputation as having an incredible like work culture and just a growth st uh, stage of your business. If you wouldn't mind, add a little color and context into uh, the workflow from getting to zero offices to thousands of offices now and what that journey's been like. <laughs> Oh man, uh, a, a workflow. Well, in the early days, there is no workflow. It's just grind, 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 figure it out, throw yeah. a bunch of stuff against the wall, see what sticks, uh, be very, very sales heavy. Um, meaning just, you know, you, you have to get on the phone, talk to customers, get as close as possible to the customer to understand what the true pain points are. I mean, you don't know how to position your product and even how to build your product out the right way until you've had lots and lots and lots of conversations with prospects and customers to, to really learn what's what's important to them. Yeah. So so the beginning stages is, is just really understanding the customer, develop the, the product based on feedback, iterate quickly. Uh, one, of the, one of the biggest mistakes I see uh, earlier entrepreneurs do is they wait for everything to be perfect. Yeah. Um, and, and you just, you gotta get to that 70 or 80% solution, get it out into the market get the market feedback so that you can iterate and, and tweak that product okay. and continue to scale from there. Don't wait for everything to be perfect. Yeah. What about marketing channels? Channels that you like, ch channels that you may have wasted money on. Dig into what your marketing mix that's worked and hasn't worked. Yeah. So we, we focus very heavily in the beginning. It all starts with keyword research. Okay. We, you got to understand what the landscape is out there. Whatever product or service you have, really focus on keyword research. For us, we were like, okay, healthy snack delivery, right? Okay, okay. Let's, look at, let's look at healthy snack delivery keywords. Well, we actually found out that healthy snack delivery is more of a consumer, more of a B2C keyword. Uh -huh. um, and we, were, we are a B2B business, right? Yeah. And so, so we had to go kind of, we had to peel the onion one layer further and realize, okay, it's actually, it's actually office snack delivery. That's actually kind of the direct hit yeah. for what our product is. The issue, what we discovered with the keyword research is that there's not a whole heck of a lot of, of searches on office snack delivery. So we said, well, how can we, how can we capture more, more searches and views um, mm -hmm. in Google? So we looked at, well, if, it's, if people aren't searching directly for office snack delivery, what are the benefits that our product provides that we can write content on? So we when you look, that, then that opened up the whole world. Okay, well, there's, an, like I mentioned, employee engagement, employee appreciation. Uh, even keywords like fun office activities. Okay. Uh, when you think about you know who your who your avatar is, who are you trying to sell to? You want to write content that genuinely helps their problem, okay. and it doesn't even have to be related to what your product is. Yeah. So, for example, fun office activities. What's the what's the kind of scenario there? It's an office manager or someone in HR searching for something fun in the office because they want to make their culture better. Yep. And because Snack Nation has some of the best content on fun office activities, we're ranked very highly in Google. Mm -hmm. As of today, I think we're number one. Um, and so what that does is it gets all the hand raisers, and anyone who's reading that article, they're either an office manager or HR. Yep. Um, so we're kind of like filtering out from, from the massive universe of people yeah. online searching for stuff. Now we know we've got the avatar that we want. 
reading the article, and then we have a conversion mechanism on that article to say, mm -hmm. hey, would you like a free box of snacks for your yeah. office? And so there's kind of a corner turn to, to snacks, um, even though it's not, snacks are not related to fun office activities directly. Yeah. So that's kind of, that was, so that was, those were some of the aha moments that we had early on. We're like, mm -hmm. okay, we can write content that genuinely helps our avatar, and that's a lesson for any business, right? Content that's going to help your, your, uh, your customer. And then uh, if your content's good enough and they get enough value from it, then they will automatically like, know, and trust you. And then it's a lot easier to kind of parlay into what your product or service is. Yeah. And that's a lot of that intent-based traffic, right? Someone's going online, they're looking for seven ways to keep my employees happy, right? And then all go. of a sudden, you got, you know, give them food. Well, feed and, them, and there you go. The people. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and so there we go. Snack Nation fills that void right away. And so that's the intent-based traffic. How much yeah. success have you guys have had on interruptive advertising, like things like Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram or any other channels? Yeah, well, so so once we, once we dialed in our organic strategy and we started building the organic traffic to our website and we had inbound leads and sales could uh, generate revenue from those leads and we're like okay cool now we have some budget to start testing yep. on the paid channels um, initially it was um, adwords uh, which makes a heck of a lot of sense because we know office snack delivery is one of our, our core keywords we can we can advertise directly on that keyword yep. um, so we started with adwords we then started testing linkedin early like 2016 okay totally bombed um <laughs> it, it super difficult incredible incredibly hard to figure out took a pause on that but then we revisited again in 2017 with a new approach yeah. and started getting linkedin actually started working really well for us yep. with, with the different approach but great thing about linkedin is you can target job titles right yeah, I was so say office managers so head of hr head of people so there's actually some parallels there the the organic content that we were writing which was targeting job titles based on the the, the content pieces yep. we you know we could do similar stuff on linkedin and target those job titles and so we got started getting linkedin to work uh banged our head against the wall for facebook for two three years still haven't gotten face figured out facebook for b2b however we've gotten instagram to work interesting um through um a new a new ad product they have called poll ads yeah so that's that's been working well sweet uh now the other big one that's worked really well is direct mail and a lot of people say, well, direct mail is old or it's not sexy. Yeah. A lot of people overlook direct mail. They say it's too expensive. There's a lot of, a lot of excuses. Um, I actually love direct mail. I think it's one of the most overlooked and most valuable channels that you can deploy yep. for your business to generate leads. Um, it's all about the list selection and the creative that you put out there. And you know, at times we've had really great lists really bad creative with bad offers, yep. it's not gonna work. We've had amazing creative and offers, bad list, not gonna work. So you, there's, a, there's a bunch of tweaking and testing to get, to get that to work, but yeah. direct mail is great. Interesting, yeah. We've, got, we've definitely had some clients do direct mail and it's, uh, it's highly targeted, right? You're sending mail directly to who you want to and there's a strong call to action. It's probably going to be a little bit cheaper. Typically, CPMs are a little bit cheaper um, as you're going into that industry. But well, cheaper what you, than what though? Yeah, well, cheaper than digital. Than digital. Yeah. I would actually, from our experience, uh, direct mail is more expensive than digital. Really? Uh, yes, because of the you know the cost of the mailer. It's you, if you want to do a cheap postcard, it's forty cents. If you want to do an, actually do like a letter or something that's physical, you're you're into the dollar yeah. you know, dollar range. Um, but like you said, it's about the list targeting, yeah, and then the um, the value of the customer is actually higher because if you think about it, when you receive a direct mailer and then you have to look at a CTA and then go online, uh -huh. that whole offline to online conversion, when yeah. someone goes online and actually yeah. converts, yep. it's a it's a much higher value conversion yeah. than if someone converts on digital because they're already online. They didn't yeah. have to go through as much effort. Yeah, 100%. I think I was thinking more cost per lead, but you're Okay, cost right. per lead, yeah. Yeah, and the yeah. value of that lead is probably much higher because you mentioned like someone actually opened their phone and submitted something or typed something or did some sort of an action. That's interesting. Yeah. In terms of, you know, obviously we can probably talk until we're blue in the face about generating leads, but what are just some of the tips that you have for really treating those leads like royalty and actually converting those leads once they're submitted? Yeah, great, great question. Um, yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the ways that we, I mean, if you want to look over a period of time, we, you know, we 5 x our, our inbound lead flow um, by focusing on a few things. One, um, have, a, have a great offer have an irresistible offer. Um, you know, there was a, uh, there's a copywriter called, uh, Dan Kennedy, 
uh, who, who has, I recommend this book, it's called The Ultimate Sales Letter. Um, he has a lot of books and he's a, he's a phenomenal copywriter and marketer, but his, uh, his advice is always uh, create an irresistible offer. And so the offer that we found that worked, that works well for Snack Nation is, uh, is to get a free snack box, right? So it's like, hey, because we, we have something physical, which is, which yep. is nice, a lot, of, a lot of digital people don't, but so we're using that to our advantage. We send out a free snack box to, to qualifying offices. So get your offer super irresistible and strong. Okay. Secondly, um, know what your customer pain po points are and how your product solves that because no one's gonna take any action if you're not solving any any pain. Yep. You, you gotta have a solution. So that ties into um, you know getting the right marketing messaging and really understanding your customer. So offer, understanding your customer, uh, and then it's channel expansion from there. It's like, okay, who is the right customer and how can we get in front of them on what channels? Yeah. So I, I gave the organic content example. We're writing content that's valuable to the people we want to sell to. You go on LinkedIn, you can target job titles because that, that's, that's who we, you know, we want to, we want to target office managers and executive assistants and HR, our people. Mm -hmm. um, AdWords, you're targeting the right keywords. Um, Instagram is uh, very good targeting. You know, we, we upload lookalike, uh, we, we upload our customer list, create lookalike audiences off of, off of our, our best customers. So that's what's powerful about, you know, Instagram and Facebook platforms with, with lookalikes. Yep. Um, and then direct mail uh, is targeting, um, you know, we, we target some of our in-house list is, it's target based on action. So sometimes we have lost opportunities yeah. from sales reps. That list grows over time. We then send direct mailers to our lost opportunities. We already know those people are, are highly qualified because they were a sales opportunity. Yeah. Um, so that's in-house. Out, our our uh, out-of-house list, um, that's a little bit more difficult for targeting. Yeah. Um, but so the bottom line of all that is get the right targeting. Um, and then finally, it's scale what works and shut down what doesn't, right? Yeah. So it's throw, throw a bunch of money out there on these different audiences and targeting, uh, cl very closely monitor your metrics and close down the ones that aren't, aren't performing. Yeah, what would you say are some of the, the red flags or indicators for things that are or are not working? I think, you know, to us, a lot of those things are intuitive, but add a little context. Yeah, there. well, um, we look at we look at all stages of the funnel. So uh, you know, let, I'll use direct mail as an example. So we look at okay, how many mailers did we send? Okay. So let's say we send ten thousand mailers. Right. Yeah. Uh, we then look at okay, how many page visits did we get from those mailers? So the the initial landing page, the call to action says go to this page. Yep. We look at how many visits there. Then we look at how many people actually converted on that page. Yep. Um, that's a lead, right? And then we have a lead score, which determines is this lead good enough to go to a sales rep? So based on that lead score, part of those leads get chopped off, part of those leads go to sales reps. Yep. So we look at that conversion rate. And then once a sales rep gets a lead, uh, what percentage of those leads convert to sales opportunities? Okay. And then of those opportunities, what percentage convert to sales? Yeah. And so we basically just, in a spreadsheet, we map out all those different steps of the funnel, plug it in weekly, Yep. and then we do a weekly review. I mean, some of these, sometimes we're doing daily reviews, but, um, but, but essentially we're, we're doing a weekly channels, cadence. Yeah. 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 When you're trying new channels, you want to look more closely, much yep. more quickly. Uh, but yeah, the, the key thing is, is, is tracking that, reviewing that. And then you can say, Hey, this just isn't working. We, yep. we can't, we can't spend any more money here. Or it's like, dude, this is going gangbusters right now. How do we spend, how do we max Double out money on this? this. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I think, you know, the, the, marketing mix that you mentioned is literally the recipe for B2B, right? It's SEO content, it's blogs, it's articles, it's Google AdWords, and then maybe testing and trying some interruptive, whether it be Facebook or LinkedIn or uh, mailers or just, you know, someone's living their day, you know they're your perfect demographic, you, you're not getting them to drive an action by some sort of a search, let's get in front of them with an incredible offer, get them to submit a lead, and then let our team do what they do best, try to get them to actually convert. And don't forget about email marketing too. Yeah. Email is huge. People, was, people saying email is dead too. It's like, no, email is one of the highest ROI channels you can have. So grow your email list, uh, build, a, build a relationship with the people on your email list, provide um, genuine value to people on your email list yeah. with good content. And, and you know the whole formula of like, Give, 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 give like ten or twenty times, and then ask once. Yep. Right. So the ask meaning you know send out an offer or send out something salesy to say, hey, you know, do you want this? But then the rest of the time, it's give, 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 give. Yep. I was just gonna say, what do you guys do uh, as far as like compensating referrals? 
compensating referrals. Yeah, or yeah, compensating ref any types of referrals that your active customers or yeah. potential customers might give you. Yeah, we have a we have a referral program. Um, what we do is when we first of all, sales reps have this ingrained in their process. As soon as they bring on a new Snack Nation member, yeah, uh, they are asking them for the, for referrals. It's kind of part of the process, and it's actually the best time to ask for a referral is. You know, strike while the iron's hot, you do it right away. Yeah. Um, we then have a more evergreen program that um, we have a uh, kind of an online hub where our members can hang out and do fun things. It's like a loyalty rewards hub. Okay. Um, and they also complete challenges to do fun things. Love it. Uh, and as part of that, there's an embedded referral program yep. that if they refer someone to Snag Nation, um, they get a $50 Amazon gift card and the person they refer gets a $50 Amazon gift card as well. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Keep, you know, treating your customers like royalty is a really big thing and highly overlooked. It's going to be really difficult to scale a business of any sort if your customers aren't happy. And you're, when your customers are happy, trying to capture that enthusiasm, share it, whether it be reviews or loyalty programs or gatherings and events like you just mentioned, treating those people like they're special is a very important part. Uh, to the marketing mix. And that's the thing. Once you start getting, you know, uh, NPS, net promoter score, if you're not familiar with it, but, you know, world in B2C, world class is like 60 NPS and B2B, it's closer to like 30 or 40. But uh -huh. regardless, as soon as you get your NPS in that kind of high end world class uh, number, yeah. referrals start happening automatically because people are so stoked about you yeah. and your service and your product that they just audit, they, they want to tell people. So that's the, I mean, that's the biggest advice for a referral program is like, just put together a, a badass product and have an amazing service and people start talking automatically. And that'll work, right? And that'll work. <laughs> I know, right? You know, it's interesting. You mentioned at the beginning that you 5 x your inbound lead generation, probably more, right? Um, yeah, I mean, technically, if you start from zero, yeah. it's, it's infinite. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, exactly. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, but no, in recent, yeah, in, in recent uh, last couple years. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been great to have you on, man. I'm really excited about this conversation. I think it's going to really help a lot of people. In summary, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of give like a quick takeaway on some of the things that you've learned and some of the things that you'd pass on to any sort of B2B or lead generation marketer. Absolutely. Uh, so I, uh, my, my uh, core, uh, my original education and self, self teaching and marketing was SEO and content marketing. So yeah. that's my, my final takeaway. I, I said this earlier, but I can't stress it enough, do the keyword research. If you don't know how to do it, there's lots of great articles that you can look up on, on Google on how to do keyword research. It's not the sexiest, it's not the most glamorous, it's actually heads down work. And if you really wanna do good keyword research, it's four to eight hours of like in spreadsheets. But yep. once you understand what those keywords are that your business wants to go after, that's the core of yep. your marketing for like many years after that. So yep. it's super important to get the baseline and really understand what you're trying to rank for and what your business is talking about in terms of the content. And once you have that identified, then it's just execution. Write articles on that stuff and know what your customer wants to read. And ultimately that's what it comes down to. You're providing content and value for your customer. Uh, and that keyword research is the baseline. Well, that's it, man, and, and it works, right? That's the that's the, that's the the end all be all is that content and SEO. It absolutely works. It might take some time, but it makes everything else work more. Effectively well, as well. It, exactly, and um, anything worth doing is worth doing well. And all of your competitors aren't willing to put into work to do that four to eight hours of heads down keyword research. Yep. So you'll, you'll be ahead of your competitors if you can just sit down and do it. Yeah, without a doubt. We're lucky because we've got a lot of platforms and tools that you know we could take that eight hour research and get it done in about a couple hours. So <laughs> there you go. We'd love to be able to help you guys. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, yeah. cheers. Yeah, look forward to having you guys again soon. Thank you. Welcome back to Life from the Nest.